The highly anticipated third flight of SpaceX's Starship took place on March 14th, and it turned out to be a mission full of surprises. Initially, everything seemed to go according to plan, with both the Starship and its super-heavy booster launching smoothly. However, as the mission progressed, there were several moments when the signal from both the spacecraft and the booster was lost and then unexpectedly regained, causing a bit of confusion and concern among those following the event. Eventually, the signal was lost entirely, and for a while, no one was sure what had happened to the mission. SpaceX has now officially provided an update on the flight's outcome. In this video, we'll delve into SpaceX's explanation and what this means for the future of Starship flights. On the morning of the launch, there were initial concerns regarding the wind speeds that threatened to delay the mission to the backup date scheduled until March 18th. However, as the day progressed, conditions improved significantly, clearing the path for the launch sequence to proceed as initially planned. In the hours leading up to the scheduled liftoff, the fueling process began, marking the start of a critical pre-launch phase. As the countdown approached T-60 minutes, the teams conducted final checks on the weather. With conditions deemed favorable, the launch director made the call to initiate the propellant loading process. By T-45 minutes, the Starship and its super-heavy booster began to be fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Following the completion of the fuel loading, the launch commenced with the ignition of the Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. These engines consumed a remarkable 40,000 pounds of liquid oxygen and methane per second, providing the thrust needed for liftoff. This process generated a significant amount of dust and steam, mainly due to the water suppression system at the launch pad. A standout feature of this launch was the performance of the water deluge system. It activated right before the engines ignited, releasing huge amount of water over the launch pad. Firstly, the water acts as a thermal buffer, absorbing the intense heat generated by the engines. This is crucial because the temperatures at the point of ignition can reach levels sufficient to damage not only the launch pad surface, but also the structural integrity of nearby facilities. By cooling the environment, the water deluge system prevents the concrete and metal structures of the pad from overheating due to the thermal stress. Additionally, the deluge system plays a significant role in sound suppression. The roar of a rocket engine especially one as powerful as the Super Heavy's 33 Raptors, can produce sound levels high enough to cause physical damage to the launch pad and surrounding infrastructure. The shockwave of sound energy has the potential to break concrete, shatter windows, and disrupt electronics. The water from the deluge system captures and absorbs a portion of this acoustic energy, reducing the overall sound intensity. The water acts as a physical barrier that disrupts the sound waves, spreading and dampening the energy they carry. This not only protects the structural components of the launch pad, but also minimizes the impact on the natural environment and nearby wildlife, which can be sensitive to the extreme noise levels produced during a launch. The effectiveness of the water deluge system was clearly visible in the footage of the launch pad post-launch. Surprisingly, the area around the launch pad showed no visible damage, indicating a significant advancement from previous launches. In earlier attempts, launches had caused considerable damage to the launch infrastructure, including creating craters under the launch mount and damaging the surrounding area. The force of previous launches had even thrown dust and concrete debris miles away from the site, breaking windows in nearby residences. During this launch, a critical procedure known as hot staging was executed 2 minutes and 42 seconds after liftoff. Hot staging is a genius technique where the engines of the next stage ignite before the current stage has been completely discarded. This ensures a continuous thrust and minimizes the time and momentum lost between the separation of stages. In this specific launch, the process involved shutting down the engines of the Super Heavy booster and then igniting the Starship Upper Stage's six engines while both stages were still connected. The concept of hot staging also carries huge risks as demonstrated during the second Starship flight. 
In that instance, the booster exploded shortly after stage separation. Analysis suggested that the slow separation process might have caused the explosion, potentially because the close proximity allowed the ignited engines of the ascending stage to damage the booster. In response to this previous failure, SpaceX made adjustments aimed at improving the timing and execution of the hot staging process for this launch. These modifications were successful, avoiding the complications seen in the second flight. The engines of the Super Heavy booster were correctly shut down, and the Starship upper stage's engines ignited as planned. Following the stage separation, the Super Heavy booster initiated maneuvers to prepare for re-entry, while the Starship upper stage continued on its trajectory towards orbit. However, the booster stage's return journey was not as successful as planned. As it descended back towards Earth, it faced challenges in maintaining stability. These difficulties prevented it from executing a controlled re-entry. Instead of performing the intended landing burn, the booster was unable to stabilize sufficiently to initiate this maneuver. Consequently, it crashed into the Gulf of Mexico, resulting in a hard splashdown. This outcome deviated significantly from SpaceX's goal of achieving a reusable booster system capable of precise and safe landings. Meanwhile, the Starship's journey to space appeared to proceed without significant issues. After its engines shut down, the spacecraft provided stunning views of Earth from space while conducting a series of tests in preparation for re-entry. The descent phase highlighted the vehicle's re-entry capabilities as it withstood temperatures exceeding 2,500 degrees. However, telemetry was lost at an altitude of about 40 miles, indicating the Starship disintegrated before completing its planned descent. SpaceX celebrated this as a major accomplishment, emphasizing the importance of reaching space and surviving the initial phase of re-entry. Despite the destruction of both stages, the test flight provided valuable data for future development. The FAA, however, categorized the event as a mishap and announced its oversight of the investigation. The FAA has been a source of frustration for SpaceX, with regulatory delays impacting the timing and planning of their first and second Starship flights. Despite these challenges and the FAA's recent classification of the latest test flight as a mishap, SpaceX views achieving 80% of the mission objectives as a significant success. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.